Well, good morning, darling. Good morning, my love. It is Monday morning, September 25th. It is. Wow, and sunshine everywhere it looks like. Our weather is going to be brought to you every day and today by Nebraska Panhandle Weather Alerts and Road Conditions. It's always a mouthful for me there. <laughs> um, also, Natwark, which is their parent company, all set up with in cooperation with David Park Jr. The weather is also sponsored by Kendall Henderson Agency, incorporated there in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. So we're going to take a look at some weather around the area. First of all, in Scotts Bluff right now, it's a little bit chilly, but it's going to be nice. It's 46 degrees and sunny and should just get up to about 80 degrees today, maybe 81. Nice. And as a matter of fact, and after today, it's much of the same throughout the week with highs in the 80s. Sounds like pretty nice days. Yeah, and pretty much uh, nice around the area. Also in Scotts Bluff, the UV index is low. Wind is just barely blowing at one mile an hour, according to this app here, AccuWeather. Humidity is at 84%, and the sunrise was at 6.44 a.m. today. Sunset will be at 6.46 p.m. Let's look at some other areas where we travel to around the country or where our listeners are. In McCook, 51 degrees right now and sunshine. Lexington, 53 degrees in the center part of the state. Omaha, 64 degrees, so a little more, a little more warmth down east. And then back here to the west and south of us, Cheyenne's 52 degrees, Denver, 55 degrees, Colorado Springs, 54. In Hutchinson, Kansas, 61 degrees. And then up north, where one of our radio stations are, up there, Great Falls, Montana, 47 degrees. And down here in Texas, where we're sitting currently, Wichita Falls, Texas, 75 degrees, with another warm day, but not near as warm as yesterday's 100. We'll take 92 today. Bring on fall, is what I say. Hey, but 82 is a lot cooler than 102, right? True. So we're pretty cool with all this. All right, well, let's move on into our daily devotional, and it's talking about the tongue today. So another thing that can bring some fire. That's right. Uh Uh-oh. What have we got here? Let's take a look. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything is possible for one who believes. Welcome to Faith Matters. No regrets. That's the title for today from The Tongue by Rocky Fleming. This is five days of abiding in Christ. Mm, Another hard lesson. You pick such good ones here, Andy. Thank you. No, thank you. Shall we get started today? Day one. What made me say that? What was I thinking? Oh, how I regret what I said. If I could only take it back. Who else will hear what I said? Will I ever be forgiven for this? Will I forgive myself? Will I ever recover from what I've lost? Can God forgive me? Have you heard yourself ask these questions before? I speak from experience when I say that I have asked these questions, and that is why I can also tell you that it's an agonizing place to be in in your thoughts. You don't want to be there, and it is something you want to avoid. It's something that Jesus wants you to avoid, and since it is our mission to make disciples, it becomes imperative that we address this subject. So let's talk about avoiding some regrets that keep you from asking the questions above. Here's Andy with rule number one. I have said many things that I have regretted, but I have never regretted something I chose not to say. Somewhere in my past, I came across this wisdom, and it has been my guide for many years now. I wish that I had always listened to it. When I have followed this wisdom, I have discovered that it has kept me from speaking too quickly too rashly, in a wrong way, and often without needed information. This week, I want to take our thoughts to the wise use of words, for words can both curse and bless. It simply depends on how 
they are used. The next bit of wisdom I will share with you is wait and think before you speak. When a word leaves your mouth, it cannot be retrieved. Both of those are scriptural. Therefore, consider your words carefully before they leave your mouth. Three things. They're just rewording scripture here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there will be a better time and there will be a better way to act rather than what a reaction can produce. This is where you choose to avoid some regrets. Oh, here's James 1.19. Know this, my beloved brothers and sisters, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. As a disciple of Christ, we are stewards of what he has entrusted to us. We have been entrusted with a life that is to honor him. Therefore, as wise stewards, we are to invest our words wisely. By doing so, we will have a return on this investment for our master as these words not only provide the listener with wisdom from above, these words also come back to bless us. Yes, God will forgive us when we have spoken wrong words, if we seek his forgiveness. Even so, we will often face the consequences of those wrong words. Therefore, this gives us even more reason to not speak until we are ready. Mm, that reminds me of a previous lesson where we learned that we should recite God's own word back to him. Mm, mm -hmm. So here's our prayer. Lord, thank you for this word and help us to know this, that we should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Then the God of peace will be with you. All right, 1690, the first multi-page newspaper. Hmm, that's interesting. And then 1789, Congress passed the Bill of Rights. In 1818, the first blood transfusion. That was kind wow. of interesting. Mm -hmm. James Blundell performs the first blood transfusion. He was an English obstetrician that had previously argued that transfusions could treat severe postpartum hemorrhages. So after giving birth, he took the husband's blood and transfused it into the wife huh. and it helped stop bleeding. So evidently, blood transfusions then eventually became a mainstay in modern medicine and have saved countless lives over the decades. That's it. That's really interesting. I didn't know that. 1818. Yeah. And somebody got loose in 1875. In 1875, Billy the Kid escaped by climbing out of a chimney. <laughs> <laughs> In 1919, Woodrow Wilson, the president at the time, fell ill. Mm -hmm. That was his first sign of becoming ill. And of course, with the pandemic and the uh, Spanish flu of 1918, it's very possible and very much speculated that he died from the flu. Yep. Or COVID, before it was called COVID. <laughs> right. So, in 1949, Billy Graham started his L.A. crusade. That was a big moment in history. Yeah. Uh, of course, he did so many things, but that was a huge crusade. And in 1975, Wish You Were Here, the album by Pink Floyd. Oh, number one. Yeah, number one in the U.S., Wish mm -hmm. You Were Here. I remember sitting in Germany. Or was I in Switzerland? I don't know. I was over in Europe somewhere <laughs> listening to Wish You Were Here, and I was thinking about being back in the U.S. So, anyway, <laughs> British band, Pink Floyd with the album Wish You Were Here. And today is National Daughter Day. Yay! We have three wonderful daughters. Yes, we do. We have wonderful daughters. We love them all. And it's also One Hit Wonder Day. Yay! Okay. How, how fun is that? Well, pretty fun. Let's see what the people say. We want you to go ahead and chime in on this. We're going to ask you what you think the best or most fun or most popular One Hit Wonder is. What do you think? Could it be Mickey? You're oh, so fine. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Mickey. 
<laughs> or how about a or how about a Fort Morgan, Colorado prefix? Call eight six seven five three zero nine nine. See if we get Jenny. <clears throat> Used to work at the radio station there, and uh, that was our prefix, but that was not our post number. <laughs> so that was on the radio. Uh, also, Soft Cell, Macarena, Too Shy, The Knack. Come on, Eileen. 99 Luft Balloons, yep. and Men Without Hats, and also The Buggles. The Buggles. The Buggles. Does anybody know who The Buggles are? I had to look this one up. Okay, so do you remember that song that was on MTV, the very first video claimed to be claimed to be the first video? What was it? Video killed the radio star. Yeah, that was by the <laughs> Buggles. Hello, the Buggles. And and get this, yes, and Asia. What? You found out. That the members of the Buggles actually ended up joining Yes and or Asia. Depending on which member it was. Yeah, some of them helped produce or join the bands, Yes and Asia. Yeah. Wow, that is pretty crazy. But what was your favorite? Oh, my favorite? Oh, well, I found out it wasn't a one-hit wonder. Oh, right. He had another very obscure hit, but Alan O'Day with Undercover Angel. Yeah. I was <laughs> back in the 70s. Undercover Angel. I thought it was a one-hit wonder. So that is what we have for this day in history and National Day. Be sure to check out the website at diggingdeeper.net for all of our articles and podcasts and more. Hope we elevated your day. Oh yes, forgot to say that, so we'll leave it in there. Did you hear that, people? Yeah. Hope we elevate your day. Yep. Thanks again for listening, and may God bless. I'm Brian Hale. I'm Andy Hale. We'll see you later. <laughs>